Good morning, I'm Lita Powell Drake reporting from Hollywood. With me this morning is Duncan Regeer, the star of My Wicked Wicked Ways, The Legend of Errol Flynn. It'll be airing here on 1011 Strong on January the 21st. He's a friend of ours, a Canadian up to the north, but has come down to visit us. You really look like Errol Flynn in the film. Not so much now, but the, the makeup people must have just done a terrific job on you. Mm, a lot of repair work. Oh, no, no. <laughs> come on, come on. Do you think Errol Flynn, who was really big, you know, one of the big D movie idols back in oh, the middle 30s, I would say, could, could he be a movie star today? I think so. Oh, absolutely. I think... Um, the guy's charisma, his charm, uh, you know, it, it would be good today as much as it was back then. Sure, absolutely. But we live, so seem to look for a different kind of a person. Look, think, about, think about the stars in the 30s. Uh, who was in um, Gone with the Wind? Clark Gable. Clark, the Clark Gable, mm -hmm. that, that type, the, the beautiful, well, you, you fit into that category. I mean, the beautiful face, <laughs> face type, but today somehow it's a little more of a craggy kind of face. You don't have to be as pretty as you seem to have to have been back then. I don't know. I think uh, certainly attitudes of what is, what is handsome mm -hmm. in uh, the male has changed over a period of time, but I think that other thing that we were talking about, the charisma of those individuals is unstoppable. I don't think that you can, you can prevent that from, from coming across. Uh, you can think of people like Robert Redford, mm -hmm. who's absolutely stunning mm -hmm. to look at. You can't beat that. You cannot stop him. Is but that where we get the phrase, in like Flynn? <laughs> no, really, from Errol well, Flynn? Well, yeah, sure. That, uh, that uh, was coined uh, after the statutory rape trial. People walked around oh, saying, it was. in like Flynn. Yes, there's a great deal of sexual innuendo there. What kind of research did you have to do, Duncan? Did you, go, did, did you know a lot about Errol Flynn before they said you're going to play the role? I knew almost nothing. I mean, I, you know, I'd seen the odd film, but um, I watched a lot of his films, and that gave me the most uh, information in, build, in, in building the character, more so than the few people that I, I knew that met him, mm -hmm. or that knew him well. Um, and, of course, the, the literature helped as well. Well, your British accent. I guess I always, I never thought of Errol Flynn as being from anywhere but the United States, but uh, he's not from here at all. No, he's from Tasmania. I don't actually have a British accent. I have a, a, a mid-Atlantic. But you are an actor, my dear. This is true. And, you're, and you're, the accent came out very well. Well, thank you. In addition to being an actor, this guy, as a young man, was a figure skater. Yeah. In Canada, where there's, of course there's a lot of ice, we don't have too much here in Nebraska, we don't have that many people who figure skate, but I know the kind of work and effort that goes into developing a figure skater from age five. Are there a lot of rinks available? Do you have to rent rink time up there? Well, sure, that's, that's really how it works. Um, you join a figure skating club, usually, and they have professional teachers and what have you. And it's, it's a, uh, you know, a very disciplined life. Aren't you a little tall to be an ice skater? I don't think, I think there, uh, there are restrictions on height. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's usually, but you see, uh, well, of course, it, it helps to be a strong male because you usually have to lift the female if you're going to do couples and doubles. Mm -hmm. But usually, they, I think of uh, more of the ice skaters as being closer to the ground mm -hmm. so they don't have so far to fall, like the gymnasts, by and large, mm -hmm. you know, are really smaller people. But you're really big. You're bigger than Errol Flynn, aren't you? Yes, yes. You were six, six four, and four he's six and two. He was six two. Yes. Um, the the uh, my wicked wicked ways is sprinkled with a lot of interesting little cameo parts. One of which is done by Hal Linden, who plays Jack Warner. Would you set up this scene, Duncan, as to where he's telling you about what's going to happen? This is a scene where uh, our man Flynn has come into his boss, be, that being Jack Warner uh, of Warner Brothers, uh, to ask for more money. And his arrival, on, upon his arrival, uh, Jack Warner informs him that he knows everything about him, more so than Flynn knows himself. I'm taking a big chance putting an unknown into such an expensive picture. But I believe you're worth it. I believe you have the potential. Why, thank you, sir. You know, I know more about you than you do about yourself. You do? I know what kind of wine you order when you dine out and what kind of wine you drink at home. I know you can order from a menu in French, in Italian, and Swiss. I know you hate to eat just meat and potatoes, and you like Rahman enough. I also know something else about you. We have something in common. We do. We both love to fight. But there's something you should know about me. I also love to win. I'm used to winning. Believe me, Flynn, 
If it ever comes down to a fight between you and me, I'll win. You understand? I think so. Everyone wants to use me. But uh, let me tell you something. I'm the user. It's my game, my ball, my bat. We'll play by my rules. Do you hear? Yes, sir. What about the swashbuckling scenes? Did you have to learn to use the swords? No, that, well, know? that's my hobby, is fencing. It is. Yeah, I fence three times a week, so. And I well, choreograph most of my own. Well, stuff. you were a shoe-in. Where did they find you? <laughs> At the time in England, actually. What were you doing? I was doing The, the Last Days of Pompeii uh, for ABC. And um, I got a call from the agent, and uh, they said, well, the director and the producer want to come and meet you. And they flew over, and we talked. I read the script, and we said, let's do it. Let, let's go into a little of the background of, um, of Errol Flynn. Was, was he an epileptic? No. Someone said... He had malaria, uh, and he was subject to, to the fits. That's when you yeah. fell down. I wasn't sure as to what that was. Yeah, you was started to shake. Malaria. That was malaria. A couple of forms of malaria, actually. He was ah. very ill with it. Ah. And it would hit him, and it would go almost as quickly as it would uh, come. And what about the alcoholism? Was it very serious? I think towards the end, yes. That and, and a multitude of other drugs he took. Mm -hmm. yes. And was he bisexual? There was innuendo to no. that. No, You don't think he was? I don't think so, no. How, how did he react to all those women at him all the time? I think he uh, rather came up to the task. <laughs> he reveled <laughs> in it, huh? Yeah. Well, we'll be looking to see, looking forward to watching you play. Uh, Errol Flynn in My Wicked, Wicked Ways. His name Thank is you. Duncan Regeer. We welcome him to 1011. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please stay tuned. There's a lot more to come as the morning show continues.